February 23rd, 2015. We're kicking it off for the trial kickoff. Coalition members here from across the country. This case is important for the patients that need it, but it could also set the template for what legalization will look like for everybody else as well. This is a coalition in effect, a collective national unity that has raised over a quarter million dollars. We're happy to be here today and uh, onward we grow. All right, so here we are. This is Jason Wilcox. Welcome back to Cannabis in Canada. Uh, we're here on February 23rd, 2015 with none other than John W. Comrade QC on the very first day of trial. Uh, today was an interesting day. A lot of activists came out in a show of support and unity around this case that we've become known as Allard. Mr. Comrade, can you fill us in on um, how you feel not only about the, uh, the show of support and activism and then maybe a little fill in on, on how things went today in court? Sure. Well, first of all, let me say uh, it's uh, great to see uh, the support from all of the uh, patients and their supporters. It's uh, you know nice to see them all being able to come out, and uh, I know many of them aren't well, and uh, it's not an easy thing for them to do. Uh, as you know, uh, one of the discussions in court today is simply trying to get one of our plaintiffs to court, who's unfortunately been very, very ill, is back in hospital, Tanya Beamish. Uh, so we've been working on a plan to try and uh, work something out, hopefully using modern technology to get her at least there and be questioned herself rather than her husband David. But David will be there. So the plan at the moment is to uh, ask the court if we can have David at 9.30 and then uh, we're going to try to figure out a way to get Tanya in the afternoon. But it will mean David probably going to the hospital with some equipment and trying to figure out. So, so we would actually have to... This, obviously they're that ill, they will need to Skype this into the courtroom? That's what we're going to try and do, yeah. We're, it's sort of a Skype thing. Uh, the federal court doesn't have Wi-Fi, uh, but it does have an internet line. And it does have the, what most courtrooms now have, you can plug something into your computer and into their thing and it comes up on a screen in front of the judge and a screen in front of the witness and so on. And there was a projector and screen in that courtroom today, so hopefully uh, uh, we talked to the registry as well, and so we're hopeful we'll get something sorted out. Because we'd much rather have her, we don't want to do anything to harm her health. And, the, and that's the first order of the day. But if, if she's able, it would be much preferable for her to tell the court her story rather than David. Uh, but David, I know, is, could easily tell it, but, you know, he, he's uh, not happy, and understandably so, in terms of what's happened to his wife and their entire situation, which has been a, a, just a disaster. And I think it's important for the court to hear from both of them, if at all possible. Today was, um, you know, the opening day, and uh, we heard from Sean Davey and uh, his uh, essentially caregiver, Brian Alexander, and I thought uh, it illustrated well to the court um, what we're dealing with in terms of an individual patient who um, uh, by his own admission, uh, would had did have and has had problems both with designated growers, uh, who were supposed to be friends and so on, and with trying to do it himself, and uh, is lucky to find Brian Alexander, who has been able to uh, help him and put him in a position where he is obviously deriving. Uh, benefit from just doing it and participating. Uh, that seemed obvious uh, to me anyway. And so we'll see how Justice Phelan, uh, uh, you know, sees things. It's early, it's the first day, the first witnesses. Uh, we got a lot to go. Um, and there's a lot that won't be heard uh, because of the nature of the procedures. I was entertained by him saying simplified action <laughs> because I must confess, it's the first one I've gone through, it's the first one I think he's gone through. And it's very different to what we're used to doing with witnesses and cross-examination and so on. And so you've had to do this huge amount of work ahead of time to put it all in writing, which then results in all these great big books that are often duplicates of what you had before, but then with all the numbers and stuff. So it's, it's kind of an interesting procedure. But hey, we're up and running. Um, it's been a while to get here. It's been a huge amount of work to get here. And, and uh, it's finally happening, and uh, you know, so far so good. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to uh, convince uh, the court at the end of the day that um, 
you know, this should be allowed to continue, that uh, it's part of uh, one's constitutional rights or to avoid the violation of one's constitutional rights. And the government, uh, of course, says, well, they want this uh, new safe commercial uh, growers type of situation. And uh, we don't have a problem with that in terms of sales to the public. If you're, you know, it's good. We, we want s s medicine that's sold to the public to be rigorously pursued according to all of those criteria um, and available to, for sale to the public. But th th there's a difference between uh, selling to the public, growing it and selling it to the public, and doing it for yourself. And, and so that's why we argue, you know, natural health care products, food, uh, people do this all the time and, and don't have to go through all those rigorous inspections and then they don't want to harm themselves and you know, where are the, where's the statistics of a huge piles of problem? I, I haven't heard of any. This was, I was just going to ask that now, do you feel the government shifting away from that fire mold and organized crime uh, challenge and, and trumpet that they made in the beginning of all this, this scheme if you have it it just seems like they, they're shifting away from that and trying to make it well patients can afford it either way and that's the argument now I'm just not hearing and I think there was a bit of a focus before as well it may not have been quite as apparent but they say the international uh, literature and Israel and the Netherlands the the studies or statistics show that it's like uh, between a gram and three grams a day even less but um, I'm not sure how com completely accurate that is. We'll, we'll see. Um, I've heard and certainly read things of, of uh, Israeli patients who are waiting and waiting and waiting and trying to get more, and they're not happy with their supply. But uh, don't forget, in Israel, apparently, you only pay $100 a month for uh, fairly high-quality stuff that uh, the government has backed in terms of research, unlike the U.S., which... Uh, you know, has always sort of blocked any positive research. But uh, even still, there's a huge amount of, of research and information out there. It's always amazes me how the doctors, medical profession, uh, and Health Canada plays it down. Um, so um, we've got uh, them switching, it seems, to the grams per day and the cost, because obviously. The LPs uh, have their basic costs. It's, their costs are quite understandable in terms of what they have to do, in terms of all the rules and regulations they have to follow. And they're also having some compassionate pricing for people who qualify. And, um, f you know, uh, from our analysis at the moment, uh, it doesn't seem like, certainly Mr. Davy wouldn't qualify with his uh, uh, motor motorcycle damage annuity. He's above their limits. Uh, he's on a, a Canada Pension Plan disability, but he also has the other one, so he'd never qualify for that. And he's explained, I thought, and uh, as we'll argue, why he needs the amount that he needs. The statistics in Canada from Health Canada show that the average is 17 grams a day, somewhere in there. And the, some of them are very, very high. Some of them are much lower. It really, as I'm learning, uh, depends upon a combination of factors. And when we put that to them, as I recall earlier, they talked about that as, oh, well, that's just what's authorized, not what they're actually using. And sure, I'm sure there's some who don't use the full amount. In fact, I hear that fairly regularly. But they, they have security in the amount offered in case something goes wrong with their crop or or whatever, so that they can, you know, uh, still make sure they get their medicine. So, um, you know, it's, it, it looks like that's what one of their arguments will be, is that, hey, if you only had one to three grams a day, you could afford a lot more from the LP. That uh, goes to the affordability issue. Um, and uh, if, uh, you know, you, 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 it's your grams per day and how much your income or disposable income is. But uh, we will argue, just as in the case of Mr. Davey, that, uh, you know, should he have to spend uh, half of his income on medicine every month uh, when he can uh, reduce it down to, uh, you know, I think seven hundred and fifty to fifteen hundred dollars uh, compared to the six thousand or something he was paying for pharmaceuticals, and uh, and and what he would be paying for for an LP. So, you know, um, it, it just uh, I still have some difficulty understanding 
this idea that uh, you are forced to have to buy your medicine, uh, you can't produce it for yourself, uh, even though you can produce natural health care products for yourself. Um, and, you know, why should you be forced to go bankrupt or to incur, incur all this extra debt if you don't have to, if there's, a, if there's an alternative solution by doing it yourself? Um, because, uh, as you probably heard, our argument is that uh, any limitations on the ability to grow a plant for yourself, even if it's a, an illegal or controlled plant, uh, within the concept of the viable exemption that the uh, courts have said should exist, um, you know, uh, having a person uh, uh, do that uh, for themselves, uh, uh, all of the complaints of fire, mold, and electrical safety, which I don't think they're giving up on, public safety, uh, but w we hope the evidence will show that uh, um, if you do it properly, it's not a problem. I understand Len Garris, uh, in fact, I saw him on television last night, the fire guy, maybe I better not tip him off because he's coming up in a week or so, but it sounds like his evidence is going to uh, agree with that, you know, if it's done properly. And that's what all the electrical people have been saying to me. We don't want to go back to people just doing it underground again and trying to hide out for their privacy. Uh, the illegal grow up seem to be disappearing. That's a good thing. There's cheaper equipment out there for medical growers. Um, and, you know, there's a huge supply. And, and so it's the huge supply in the U.S. that has destroyed the B.C. illegal market. And so that means less, I think they said 60 to 80 percent less grow ups in Surrey, B.C. Illegal grow ups we're talking about because the legal ones can get inspected. You make sure they, they're safe, electrical, fire, mold, all these things. And, and, you know, we know we've talked to the experts on how easy it is to control some of these things. And so that leaves public safety. So public safety, you say, um, again, with Washington State, Colorado, all these developments, uh, the oversupply or the greater supply has reduced the demand uh, and made it uh, ridiculous for anybody to want to rip off a, 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 certainly a medical grow, uh, knowing that a medical grow has the security and equipment and people will call the police. This isn't an underground thing anymore. And so that's, I think, you know, a positive uh, development. I mean, as you said, they also haven't provided the stats. Just in closing, John, will there be much of a change that you think in the trial schedule? We have a lot of people have come in from all across the country for this trial. Is it three weeks just straightforward from this point? Uh, yeah, you look at the schedule that's there. It's up on our uh, on the web page. Um, uh, Real Kapler won't be called now, so there'll be a, a few gaps. Uh, we've got some arguments we have to make about a few things, but at the moment it is the way it is. Uh, the only one that there may be this change is, is between uh, uh, Tanya Beamish and Dave Hebert because of her medical situation. Okay. So at the moment I don't see any other changes. You never know in this business, but uh, hopefully it'll run according to plan. As always, John, thanks for coming on Cannabis in Canada. We look forward to bringing more updates. Stay tuned, and we'll definitely be bringing you more as we continue to cover the trial as it commences in the next three weeks. Cheers.